On today's video on how to build your food truck, actually today is a very, very, very sad moment for me as I say goodbye to the project that we have been working on on this video series on how to build your food truck. I'm Frank Baltieres and I've been taking a video series where we go step by step by step and we took this empty utility trailer or enclosed trailer seven by 16 with an interior height of seven feet and we took it from a completely empty trailer to a full kitchen on wheels, a restaurant on wheels, and it's gonna go to its new home. And uh, we've done everything from the electrical to the plumbing to the concession window right here. As you guys can see, we'll open it up so you guys can get a peek inside. We did the serving window right down here. Let me take you on a peek inside so I can show you a recap of everything we've done and we're gonna repeat it one more time. We're gonna probably do a how to build your food truck 2.0 and go more in depth on th things that maybe in the beginning I, I went really fast on that are very important being like the electrical, uh, the plumbing and things like that. But let's go inside right now and let me show you what we've done and how it turned out. And uh, this is the last time that I will be seeing this trailer here. So let's go inside. Again, Frank Baltieres with the YouTube series how to build your food truck thank you again for watching every single episode we've taken everything from a to z and now it's the grand finale on how we did it and how it turned out so let's walk inside let me show you everything that we've done all right let's open the door and let's walk right inside okay so let's turn on the light first right here we got our lights right there uh we have our prep tables that we made this is the switch sorry the control that that turns on the, the rope lights that we install on the outside. I put these bins down here as storage. Right here we we used washers and, and bolts on there to, to secure them down because these prep tables don't really have any storage. We can't use cabinets, so we have to improvise a little bit. On this side over here, we have our two pieces of cooking equipment being a 48 inch griddle, 12 inch burner, and it has a full suppression system on there. It has its little pull station right there, and that, there are the two nozzles that are needed for this particular setup. Bought the hood from Hood Mart. That's the, the switch that has the exhaust hood right in the middle right there. We have an extra piece of equipment of, of table right there. That one, what I really like because I did it differently on my food truck. I like this one because if, let's say, uh, they wanna take this off and put like a food warmer there a steam table or something you can just take this off and it doesn't impact the the griddle and the burner on mine i have actually one piece so i can't remove it we have a 48 inch prep table this one was used i found it on marketplace great place to find good deals i found this one all the way in wisconsin so that's how i found this one uh, right up top right here, we have the electrical panel. This is a Siemens electrical panel. It's actually a 100 amp panel. Not really needed for all of this, but I used a 50 amp cable that uh, is eight gauge, eight three. So we have our two breakers right here that we use. It's a little bit obviously of an overkill of a panel, but I just really like the look of this panel. You can always do a smaller one. I just don't like them. You know, I don't like how they look, put it say, because they're really small. And I just really like how this, panel looks it's only like 30 bucks we have our stainless steel back door right there that uh, the ramp door we have our switch right here for the fridge if you could just turn it on see turns on the prep fridge right there what else do we have here Ooh, these are really cool i'm going to show you i have a video there of everything that we've done with these flange feet and how we install them but these right here were really cool i found them at lowe's hardware store what do we have up here we have our two tanks uh, the fresh water and the wastewater that we use along with our plumbing that all runs right there We have our water pump our propane water heater uh, The water filter thing right there We have our propane line that feeds everything our two fire extinguishers being a class K and a class ABC Up here. We have our glove dispenser We have the napkin dispenser soap dispenser. We have a dish rack right there one thing that I'm going to add here shortly is a first aid box right there in that little spot right there. I'm also going to add one more thing right here, which 
All right, so something I did here was I spray painted a lot of these washers white, and I'm gonna show you exactly where I put them because I believed that you need a little bit more support for this certain part of the trailer. So let me show you really quick. I'm gonna add this in that little spot, which they call this a, uh, man, what do they call this? There's a special name, speed rail. That's what it's called. It's called a speed rail that we're gonna put on there. I like to use these, obviously. This one's holding up my water bottles right now, but you can put anything you want in there. Sometimes I put my oil. Uh, what else? Up here on the top, something that I did differently that uh, I probably didn't show you on other videos because I did it last night, is I actually put washers. I painted these washers. They're actually um, gray because they're made out of state steel. And I painted them white. I put some primer on them first, metallic. Sorry, just primer with the spray paint. And then I put white uh, gloss spray paint because on this FRP, I wasn't really feeling it <laughs> in the aspect of the screws were were kind of just like i don't know it just it just didn't it just didn't vibe with me so i had to change it if that makes sense hopefully it does i i will probably not use frp in another construction of a trailer i would go with stainless steel but i use these washers right here to give it extra support because i feel it needed it so that's kind of the changes that we've done man it feels so cool to be in here but for now, I think that's gonna be it for this video series. We're gonna start a video series that I said, how to build your food truck 2.0. And we're probably gonna do, probably gonna do uh, some more uh, how-to videos so it can really help you out and getting some of this electrical done. So with that, thank you for watching. Frank Bolt here is subscribe, share the channel. Any questions, drop them in the comments. Thank you. Alrighty, alrighty so we're doing some last minute testing before tomorrow. This goes to its new home. I put my 30 pound tank on here just to verify to see if we have any type of gas leaks or anything like that. So let's turn it on. Let's walk inside and let's see. You see how that turned green? That means we have pressure at least to that changeover. Let's go inside and see if there's any leaks. Turn on the propane water heater and things like that. Okay, so on here we have our first like a shut off valve. Let's turn that on. Let's close that door. Let's turn this one on that goes over to the propane water heater. And then we're going to turn that on and see if it works. And uh, actually, you know what? Ooh, that's a good question. There's no water in there. Um, I might have to fill up these tanks with water. Give me one second. Okay, so I am going to have to fill this up with water. That way, we get some water inside the tanks and we can test out the water heater we're going to test out the faucets we can test out the three compartment sink make sure we don't have any leaks in there the water pump that it works very important step when it comes to the food truck uh, obviously the health department's going to do this as well they're going to check everything on your tr on your truck but for now we're just going to test this out let's see where it is all right as you can see there these things are filling up these little tanks no leaks so far but obviously we don't have enough water in there to see that uh oh let me make sure that the valves are closed at the bottom right here one second so far so good still no leaks yet we say yet because you just never know we want to always make sure that we deliver a great product and so far so good so what we're going to do next is we're going to test out this water pump we're gonna test out the propane water heater, make sure that that works. We're gonna see if the hot water works on the hand sink right here, and as well right here on the three compartment sink. So that is the next step. And what we have before we do the special delivery tomorrow, we got a box of gloves ready to go as well. And that is the status update as of right now. All righty, before we get ready for the special delivery tomorrow, we need to do some testing and part of the testing is to make sure that the hot water works, that the cold water works, that the water pump is working as well. And I have connected this one down here with my electrical. That is my propane leak detector. And this right here is a switched outlet. So right now we're gonna flick the switch and then we're gonna turn on the water. Let me turn on the water there. Make sure that it works correctly. So that's the cold water. It's pumping there. And then we got this side over here. Let's see if this side works as well. Look at that. And let's make sure that the hot water works. That's very important because the health department is gonna make sure they're gonna be on your butt 
test and make sure that your hot, hot water works. So let's turn on the hot water with the liquid, pro, with the propane water heater. There it is, it, it should flicker on. Oh, there it is right there. So this should be pumping some hot water right now. Come on, baby. Let me make sure we turn up the temperature and the flame on there. Woo! Oh, that's actually pretty hot. Oh yeah, it just took a while. Oh, you can see there's some flashes in there in the ventless propane water heater. Oh, that actually is pretty hot. Um, there it is. So there's the testing that we have for the hot water. Let's turn that off for now because we don't need to be pumping anymore. So in, the, in that testing phase, we went through the whole uh, water fill right there, just about everything, to be honest. Actually, we did because that pump was starting to give me a little bit of a, of a sound. So now what we're going to do is we're going to test out the, the dump valve, which is that far right one right over there. We're just going to dump out that water. It's clean because all we're doing is testing, make sure the water was working. We did have to uh, play around with the water heater a little bit. Right here, you get batteries. That's what ignites it. That's what gives it like that fire to be able to, to turn on with the propane, which is that yellow hose right there. So make sure you add your batteries right on there. The two switches on the front are for your water to get hotter. That's what we use for that. But now we're just gonna dump out that water and then make sure that tomorrow it's working as well. They're gonna come pick it up tomorrow and we're gonna give it one more test. But for now, I just wanted to make sure that it was running. And it should be working. If I just pull up the valve right here, it should dump it out. Like I said, it's just clean water. We had a ton of rain yesterday, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, that's the water that we're dumping out. That's going to be what they use every time that they want to dump out their, their water at their commissary. So there you go. Perfect. Let's see if we have any leaks inside. No leaks. Everything looks good. I didn't smell any propane, um, any propane leaks as well. That's my leak detector. I bought that on Amazon. I'll link it here in the description. You also need a carbon monoxide detector, which I ordered, which should be here anytime today. Uh, and these are the two fire extinguishers as well that I, that I purchased from Webstaurant. There you go. And tomorrow we're going to fire these two up. I didn't want to. Alrighty. So I've gotten the question a couple of times is how do you hold your prep table in place so it won't be moving all over the place so one thing that i did add on here after i like googled different things to hold up the the wheels i bought this it's called a dormant safety set it's nsf rated and you put it right on the wheels i just put it on the back wheels this one i left it as such and that's part one of what i'm gonna do to hold that i do to hold like mine and the other part is this right here I have these L brackets that I put along the wall right there and then the other part holds on to the fridge right here and since this is all just insulation I'm able to screw right inside there's no like refrigerant parts in there so that's what I did to or that's what I do to hold my prep fridge and that's what I'll do to this one as well dormant safety set and I'll link it in the description alrighty so this is what I used to uh, screw just to show you guys it's an L bracket this is an 8 inch L bracket and we're just gonna put it right on the wall match it up we drilled that hole earlier uh, just make sure that when you're drilling don't drill really hard all the way to the other side of the trailer because it will come through and you will have a hole in your trailer so make sure that you do it there and then we put two more screws right here on the prep fridge as I mentioned this is all just insulation so that's how it is on mine so make sure that you check yours and we put the three holes right there and we connect it that way the prep fridge does not move while driving just as so we have this one done i might have to add one right there and then the table has to get some as well uh i just have to scoot this piece a little bit more you see the three quarter inch right angles i have to scoot that just a little bit more towards the wall but this table is pretty heavy so i need an extra set of hands so that will have to wait just a little bit. Just wanted to show you the L brackets and how we use them for the table. I had actually bought these. These are six inch ones. They're a little bit too small. So I have to return them and buy two more eight inch ones. 